Hi, everyone. This, my name is Kelly. I'm the program coordinator for Study Abroad program. Thank you for joining us today to this uh, Study Abroad in Florence info session. Joining us today, we have um, Paula. She is the uh, regional director of AIFS, which is our provider. And uh, we have Dr. Alice Yan. She is the uh, acting director of special international program. We have Professor Jessica Marshall. Um, she is a leading professor for Florence 2024 spring program. We have a special guest, Erica. Uh, she's our student representative. She'll be talking to you about the uh, study abroad experience she's had. Without further ado, uh, we will uh, do a poll first, really quick. Uh, we'll launch this. A few questions would we'll take a uh, 30 seconds to do it. Which college is your home campus? College of San Mateo, Kenyatta College, or Skyline College? How likely are you going to apply for this uh, study abroad, Florence 2024? And uh, what is your number one concern of uh, participating uh, to study abroad? Um, are you concerned about money, finance, uh, new, adapting the new country, uh, cope with uh, homesick, or finding a supportive group? Can you all see the poll posted? Thank you. Thank you for participating, students. Perhaps many of you are joining the uh, from the phone, maybe have a hard time to do the poll. So we will uh, disable it right now. We'll just get the program started. Thank you. Um, first, we will have uh, Paula to do the presentation for the Florence uh, Spring 2024. Thank you, Paula. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, my name is Paula Messina, and I work with AIFS Abroad. Um, we are a study abroad organization that works with uh, the San Mateo County Community College District to um, set up and run this program. We're in partnership with, with you all for many, many years, since 1988. Um, and I um, am here to walk you through all of the details of the of this uh, semester in Florence, the spring semester 2024. And I am going to present it in conjunction with uh, Professor Marshall, who um, has a lot of really firsthand, great firsthand knowledge of the program. Uh, before we start, I just want to give you a few details. Uh, what is NACSAC, right? The And the Northern California Study Abroad Consortium is a group of four community college districts that joins together in order to provide um, a, a semester study abroad uh, program for for their students and uh, faculty. And so you will be um, instructed by, by faculty from each one of the districts and you'll be in class with students from all over Northern California. And we did want to really emphasize that study abroad is an an investment, we understand that it is a financial investment. We certainly understand that it is an investment in time, but we really want to highlight that it is an excellent investment in your education and even better in your future. Statistics tell us then that fewer than 10% of US undergrad uh, study abroad every year. And having that experience on your transcript for transfer, having it later on your resume will help you stand out from 90% of your peers. It is a high impact educational practice. Um, it shows admissions officers and employers that you have attained a highly desirable skill set. Things like intercultural competence, that ability to relate to and speak to people from other cultures. You understand diversity. You're a problem solver. Because remember, when you immerse yourself and go to live in another country, in another society with a whole other set of rules, you have to figure things out on a daily basis. You Those problem solving skills really do get 
um, honed in on and and improved. Um, and then all of those personal or soft skills that you gain, things like independence, creativity. Um, you you're a, a risk taker, right? You're you're a self starter. You take initiative. Um, you're flexible and adaptable. Those are skills that employers are looking at uh, for. They're they're looking for those and having stories about those instances in a job interview during your international experience is going to help you hear you're hired. Um, and then why Florence? And I'm going to throw this over to Professor Marshall, if, if she doesn't mind. And she's going to tell you why Florence is her favorite city, because I know it is for a fact. <laughs> Thanks, Paula. Um, oh, gosh. I'm so excited to be able to go and possibly be your teacher. Um, I love Florence for a number of reasons. Um, it was my first study abroad semester that I'd ever had um, back in the 90s, and it was actually with AIFS. Um, so I'm somebody that's gone through the program and now um, teaches in the program, which is very exciting. Um, I love Florence for a variety of reasons. I mean, it's beautiful. The food's amazing. Um, the cost of living is less, the history is incredible, um, and it just brings up times in my life that were just really exciting to me. I learned a lot about myself and my country being away from it. I love that. It is, it's one of the most beautiful cities in Europe, for sure. It is a city full of history and art and architecture and food and um amazing fashion and I mean there's just so much you'll never get bored of Florence and I love that Professor Marshall was a student and now a faculty on this program that's really special and for us at that work at AI Fest that means a lot um ideally situated to travel around Italy and Europe I mean that is probably high on your bucket list right it was I'm also an AI Fest alumna um, I went to Spain for my AIFS uh, semester and um, yeah, traveling around the country and seeing Rome and Milan and maybe Sicily, um, that that's important. And then all of the different places where you can travel in Europe is probably on your bucket list. Um, there's budget airlines in Europe. Um, travel is easy. The distances are far less than we are have here in the US. So um, yeah, that is another great advantage of why Florence. And then just to give you a very, very uh, brief view of AIFS, um, it's a, we feel that it's important that you get to know us because we are going to be with you the entire way. Um, we are a study abroad organization that works with over 400 different colleges and universities across the country. As I mentioned before, we've been partnered with the NACSAC colleges and with your district since 1988. So we have many years of experience, 35. Um, we've been uh we've sent over a million and a half students in and we're currently in over 20 countries and i think our forte is that we have local program coordinators so um the program coordinators that you'll meet that will meet the group flight at the airport that are you know there to walk you through the first day's orientation that are there on a daily basis in your student center every single day um you know answering questions giving advice going with you on, on the field trips and activities and excursions. And then they're there on call 24 seven to make sure that, um, you know, any incident or issue that you might have after hours is resolved as quickly as possible. So that's what we do. These are your program dates. Um, so you will depart the U.S. on February 3rd, um, then an overnight flight to Florence, uh, arriving on the morning or the afternoon, probably, of February 4th. You'll have your orientation and then some important workshops on the 5th and the 6th, uh, workshops like um, cultural advice, health and safety. Uh, there's, you know, we try and break up the information into several sessions. Your classes will start on the 7th of February. You'll have a full week break between the 16th and the 24th. So you can travel during that week if you want to, or you can just really see and enjoy uh, your free time in Florence. It's entirely up to you. 
Um, and then you'll continue your semester until May 2nd, which is your last day of class. And the end of the program and your departure from Florence is on May 3rd. Some students will come right back to the US. Some students may be um, planning um, further travel in Europe. Um, the AI Fest Student Center, we are in the heart of Florence. Um, it is in the Piazza Santa Croce, which is in the historic center. It is about a five minute walk to the River Arno and a 10 minute walk maybe to the uh, cathedral or the Duomo. Uh, the student center has five classrooms, a student lounge, um, computer and printer access. We have our student services staff that are there um, during office hours and then on a 24-7 basis on call. Um, they're there to coordinate everything. As I mentioned before, they're all really lovely people. They're a mix of American expats that live there and Italians. So um, it's a nice combination, a, a group of people that love to share Italian culture and um, with, with American students. This is an old map, but I like it because um, it's it's got you know all the monuments drawn there, but you'll see the the yellow star. That's where we're located, very close to the Arno, as I mentioned, and then um, very close to the Duomo. It's less than a ten minute walk from to there, close to the train station. And Florence is such an easily accessible city. It's um, a city where people walk everywhere. It is an old city, an ancient city. So the streets are not very wide and not meant for, you know, a lot of traffic, not not so many large avenues. So uh, people walk everywhere. You don't get as many, um, you know, buses and there's no underground. So people are out and about, you know, enjoying, enjoying the scenery and enjoying the stroll, the pasadiato every day. And then academics, and I'm gonna throw it to Professor Marshall, who's gonna tell you a little bit about the academics that are offered. Yeah, each program is different. Um, so for Florence, the next spring, um, we'll be offering anthropology, um, English, history, and biology. So there's four different faculty going, um, one from each district, but you have the opportunity to take classes from any of those fields and any of those professors, which is great because you can get your um, different GE requirements met. Um, there's lots of different GE being offered. So for example, um, you could take biological anthropology to meet the science requirement, um, or you could take you know, um, cultural anthropology to meet a humanities requirement. So go ahead and look at the list. I'd encourage you to do that for all the different fields, for the English, the history, um, and also the biology to see how that fits into your educational plan and meet with an academic counselor. Um, if you have any questions about my classes, I'm happy to help you. Um, there we go. I'm really excited. I'm going to be teaching cultural anthropology, physical anthropology, and ethnographic film, as well as the Italian um, life and culture class. Yeah. Thank you, Paula, for putting those up. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm, I'll go back toward the other, the other faculty. I think, you know, they're all um, transferable units, which is important, right? The idea is that you're meeting um, requirements that you have to take. So you're not behind in your transfer and your, your ed plan. And they're all courses that um, are taught by California Community College faculty. And I think every single one of the four of them are working really hard to make Florence your classroom. Um, yes, right. In fact, um, the faculty are collaborating. We just were shooting off emails to each other this morning because we're so excited just to overlap some of the field trips, um, to think about how we can actually get the curriculum involved with Florence. So for example, the ethnographic film class will be focusing on neorealism. It's a certain time period in, in Italy, a real slant on that kind of genre of film to think about culture. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. So in my classes, for example, there'll be field trips um, and then we'll discuss the field trips that we go on and they fit right into the curriculum. Um, the other thing is that the classes that I'll be teaching will be zero textbook classes. So you don't have to purchase a textbook, which is nice. Awesome. Awesome. 
Um, Professor Olson from Los Rios is teaching English, and these are the courses that she's offering. Um, and Professor Corbley is a history faculty. He is from Contra Costa, and he'll be teaching history. I mean, what a fantastic place to learn um, history since the Renaissance and contemporary European history and world history since the 1500s, right? Amazing. Um, and then some some STEM too, which is really cool. You don't get that always on a on a study abroad program, um, but here you'll be able to meet a science requirement and take human biology or current issues in bio or basic concepts of ecology. And then you may have noticed that with the four slides, the course on the bottom is the same, that Italian life and culture course. That course is the only required course. Um, that course is, uh, all students will take it. The entire group will have a single lecture. The the aim of this course is to understand culture and society in Florence and Italy. It is really focused on, um, you know, everything on explaining everything that you're seeing as you're out and about in the city and you're relating and speaking to people and seeing things on the news and reading in the newspapers, um, you know, the history, the arts and architecture, the politics. Um, the cuisine is important, customs and traditions. Uh, we'll have local lecturers come in and um, talk to you about their topic of um, expertise. And then that will generally be on a Tuesday afternoon. And then on the Thursday, you generally will have some kind of field trip or activity that has to do with the lecture that you um, that you listen to on Tuesday. Students really like this, this course. It is interesting. It is experiential. It's really um, everything you wanted to know about Italy. It explains it all. So um, like I said, it's required. Students from the San Mateo district will take it from Professor Marshall, plus another course that she offers, and then you can choose your remaining courses from any of the other faculty. So we're gonna go back, and sorry, we did that out of order, but then we have um, lots of cultural activities besides the the activities that you do in your uh, your Italian life and culture course um, will have some um, a game where you'll see the local team, the Fiorentina. You'll have walking tours on lots of different themes. You'll have theater, opera, maybe a dance performance. We'll do a wine appreciation event, an olive oil tasting event. There's some day trips. These are all um, included or subsidized, and the subsidy is tends to be very small, generally about 10 or 15 euro. For example, the game, I believe, is a 10 euro subsidy the, um, yeah, most of them um, are between five, 10, maybe 15 for a day trip. Um, the excursion to Siena and San Gimignano is included. That is a beautiful um, medieval town. And I know we have our, our student here who's gonna tell you a little bit about more about her experience. And we'll ask her what she liked most about all of these places. But the student last time, whose name was Siena, who joined us said that this was her favorite visit in in um, the entire semester. And San Gimignano is a little village in Tuscany. The Chianti wine region is another day trip. We will go to a winery or two where you'll learn about the winemaking industry and the, um, the whole um, biology and ecology of it. And you will also get to taste some varietals. Your housing is uh, in student apartments. These are apartments in several different buildings around um, Florence. They're within a 15 to 30 minute walk to the study center, typically four to six students. We've had larger groups because we've had students request one another um, and you can request roommates, that's absolutely fine. We're happy when students request one another. They come with equipped kitchens and a shared living room, full bath, Wi-Fi, washing machines. They're all prepared for modern day life. 
And then just to sum up, we have um, included in the program fee of 8,145. Your housing for the three months for the duration of the program in a student apartment is included. You're uh, having access to the student center, your staff services, including that 24 seven emergency contact, your orientation program, your guided tour of Florence. So we'll have a local area walking tour. We'll have a cultural highlights tour. Then you'll have weekly subsidized activities. You'll have your excursions to Siena, San Gimignano, and Chianti. Your medical insurance is included and pre-departure services. About a month prior to departure, we will meet together in uh, Sacramento, I believe. I get my mixed up, but we'll meet on one of the campuses and we will have a pre-departure orientation. Um, what is not included would be your airfare, but we are offering an optional group flight. Um, your community college tuition fees would not be included, but financial aid can be used. Uh, textbooks would not be included, but I know your, your faculty like uh, Professor Marshall are working hard to make sure that this is as low cost or no cost as possible. Any personal expenses, including passport fees, personal travel, um, and meals are not included and uh, worldwide trip protector insurance. So when you pay your deposit with AIFS, we will offer you an additional um, insurance to insure your program fees in case of cancellation or interruption. And then um, your group flight is a round trip from um, San Francisco International to uh, Florence and back. It, um, that round trip also includes a meet and greet in the Florence airport and uh, transfer to your accommodations and then return at the end of the program. The uh, full price for that is 1,290 round trip. Um, we asterisk it because um, the taxes, fees and fuel charges are not guaranteed until the day of uh, ticketing. So that is subject to change, but generally it doesn't change much. Um, so we're pretty good at estimating that. So you can pretty much count on the 20, what, 1290. Then we're going to go to scholarships. Um, I know that uh, either Kelly or, or Dr. Gang would like to um, talk about the Gilman Scholarship, which is an important scholarship for study abroad, open to all uh, US citizens or nationals that also receive the Pell Grant. Um, but there are a lot of scholarships out there. And I do really want to um, encourage you all to apply to as many scholarships as you can. Uh, you tick many of the boxes that, um, you know, give you some preference for scholarship awards, but it, it does take some work, right, to write a good personal essay and fill out applications um, and get the, um, you know, get these done before the deadlines and, and apply to scholarships. AIFS itself will award um, three scholarships, one $1,000 and two $500 uh, program fee reduction scholarships for students on this program, but you have to apply separately. So please make sure that you apply to everything you can. Dr. Yang, would you like to jump in here and talk about the Pell Grant now? Yeah, I would be- uh, Or Kelly, I'm you sorry. Call it. Yeah, thank yeah. you. All right, I'm gonna um, stop sharing and I'll let you- Okay. I'll be sharing my screen. Yeah. So, uh, Gilman, Gilman Scholarship, because I asked a question earlier saying, um, what's your number one concern about studying abroad? Many students um, have concerns about the finance. So this Gilman is a really good opportunity. Um, this is, what is Gilman Scholarship? Gilman Scholarship is a program uh, that's um, initiated by U.S. Department of State Bureau of Education and Cultural Affairs. It's called ECA. It awards up to $5,000 to qualified student to study abroad. So if you're currently receiving Pell Gram, you're a U.S. citizen, you are qualified to apply. The acceptance rate for San Mateo County Community College is high. Um, we were ranked number one uh, Gilman recipient in one year. So we actually help you uh, with, uh, you write the essay, we go through with you, we uh, give you advice. We actually have two upcoming workshops 
So you look at this flyer. This, this is a, a U.S. Department of State flyer. So I will share with you later with uh, the workshop. The deadline to apply for the Gilman is October 5th, but we want you to get get it done early because uh, as Paula mentioned, the essay takes time to write. Um, the two upcoming uh, Gilman workshop, like, I will share with you uh, the workshop. There's actually one of them is um, coming up this Thursday. You are welcome to join. So this Thursday from four to five and the next Thursday from four to five. And you're also welcome to schedule one-on-one -on -one meeting, advising meeting with us, with uh, one of the team members. We will get, guide you how to um, do the application. Um, the, the essay, we will provide you with the prompts and uh, then um, you can give you advice on how to write those essays. You're welcome. Please um, write your name in the chat if you uh, are currently receiving Pell Grant and uh, uh, you are a U.S. citizen. So I will connect you after this info session. Also, feel free to uh, email me directly. I will type you, uh, my contact information in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, I want to add that this uh, deadline, October 5th, is your only chance if you want to attend this spring uh, Florence program. So please, uh, if you are a Pell Grant recipient, you may create a Gilman account right now and see what are the requirements there, and we'll help you. Thank you. Right, I'm gonna share my screen back and we're gonna, we have just a few more slides and then we'll take questions. We definitely wanna hear from our, our student, our alumna. And sorry, I'm gonna go all the way down. Um, other things that students are doing, because we know that, um, you know, savings is important, cutting down on your expenses, um, asking for gifts of money, getting out there and um, doing some, some side hustles, some things like garage sales, like the student in the photo, or uh, side jobs. We have students who are, are doing Instacart on their, on their um, free time, and then asking their networks for support asking, you know, getting out there and sharing their story, their major, their academic goals, why they want to study abroad and, and talking about this program and, and why it's so important to them and asking all of their networks for as much support as they possibly can. Um, we have students doing that to help pay for their program fees. Um, and then we we also wanted to make a little note that um, study abroad with the NACSAC consortium is a uh, a tradition that uh, runs every semester. Fall semester 2024, the consortium will be in London, England, um, and the program setup is nearly identical. We just changed locations. Students will be in homestays or student residence. They will um, also have courses from four faculty that are transferable. Instead of Italian life and culture, they'll do a British life and culture, which is also fascinating and interesting and full of really good food. Um, London Travel Pass is included in that one because London is a, a large city with a, a big public transportation um, system. Uh, study Center in Kensington near um, Will's, William and Kate and the kids, um, right in the heart of London. Uh, excursions and activities going on that really highlight the city. So if spring is coming up too soon, maybe fall was better for you, then please consider um, London. But honestly, get on it, especially with the fundraising and the scholarship applications as soon as you possibly can. Just yeah. as a side note, too, Please. just to add, um, you can use FAFSA for this. So your yeah. um, federal application aid. So even if you don't get a scholarship and you're still trying to figure out how to pay for this, um, that's an option. 
Absolutely. Right. So your Pell Grant, your Cal Grants, um, those all help, you know, with um, with the fees. And then for the rest, you want to use scholarship money and and savings and and uh, support fundraising. So I'll let Kelly maybe pick up the um, application process for this. Um, your deadline, your priority deadline is coming up. It's the 22nd, but it is extended. The final deadline for your application is November 3rd. Yeah, sure. So um, the application process, I have the um, AIFS website on the, in the chat. I would put in that again. So first, you uh, create uh, an account with AIFS website. And uh, after you apply over there, you pay your deposit, $450 deposit. Then I will be contacting you after you pay to a $450 deposit. Um, there's one more application you need to do with uh, San Mateo Com Community College District. Um, after that application, um, Professor Jess, uh, Marshall and I will be interviewing you for, uh, for 30 minutes. Once you're, uh, sub, uh, once you're accepted into the program, um, there are a few forms uh, you will need to fill out and uh, sign. So it's, uh, everything is pretty easy. Um, on, submit AIFS application, the first step, and second step is pay your deposit. Third step is uh, a SMCCD application and interview. Then, um, we will take care of rest with you, work with you, collaborating with you for the rest. So make sure you apply by uh, September 22nd so we can schedule for you the interview um, thereafter. Another so the chat. Yes. Of the, yeah. um, just one last thing. One advantage of signing up by the 22nd is that you're going to have more class choices. So if you're trying to get this into your GE plan, I'd really encourage you to sign up. And also the program books out. And so you just want to make sure that you get your application in so that you get a chance to go on this extraordinary opportunity. Yes, this program is a first come, first, come, first serve. So we sent about 20 to 30 students. And uh, we have, I think AFS has received more than 100 applications now. So hurry up if that's your plan. Yes, definitely submit your application so we can get your course uh, picked up. So um, Paula is um, all set with uh, press, uh, the information. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much, Paula, for joining I... us. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm new at this Zoom thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I we had some questions for Erica, if she doesn't mind. Um, we were going to ask her a little bit about maybe her favorite, um, favorite spot in Florence. Oh yeah. Actually, uh, Erica went to study abroad, but not Florence. Oh, she I was she Florence. Yeah. I'm sorry. She will <laughs> share with us her study abroad experience. Excellent. She, uh, yes. Uh, next we'll have, um, Erica, my colleague. She was a St Skyline College student and she went to study abroad. Now she work with us in our office as a division assistant. So she'll be sharing with you her study abroad experience. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Kelly, for your warm welcome. Hi, everyone. My name is Erica Cornejo. I am a non-traditional student. I'm currently studying sociology. Uh, so when I heard about the opportunity to study abroad in Costa Rica, I was a little hesitant, um, but I have no regrets. Um, I really did enjoy the experience. Um, so I studied abroad in Costa Rica in the summer of 2022. We were about 10 students and two faculty members. We studied intercultural communication and the housing um, involved a host family. So my roommate and I had our own separate room, which was great. And we had guest speakers talk about uh, the education system, political and the healthcare system in Costa Rica. We also uh, did some volunteer work at a humanitarian foundation and we visited a coffee bean farm. 
So there was a good balance between in-classroom and outside of learning. Um, I would say a challenge for me was time management um, between completing assignments, because I was also taking online classes. Um, that was a challenge between completing assignments and getting some rest. And I would say overall, traveling with a diverse community enforced my global perspective. And I have no regrets. I encourage you all um, to apply, at the very least to apply. And if anybody has any questions or you wanna connect, I'll leave my email address in the chat. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you so much, Erica, for sharing your experiences with us. That's great. You learn so much and you share with you what's difficult. So this is um, realistic, very real. So feel free to connect with Erica if you have question or connect with me if you have question. So um, next we will have Q&A. Feel free to ask questions. And uh, Jessica, would you like to uh, do a welcome message? Um, sure. I, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, I was a student in the 90s at the community college and also went on this program. So I have that perspective. I've also taught in the program before um, and I've been teaching 20 years. So if you guys have any questions about my classes, the syllabi, transfer, um, anything like that. Um, please let me know. I, I think it changes your life. It sounds strange that that can happen in three months, but for myself, it really changed my trajectory. It really defined what I wanted to do. Um, and it led to other opportunities in the future. So I ended up volunteering abroad. I ended up doing my master's um, in England and um, PhD um, in Australia. So I ended up staying a lot of the time out of this country <laughs> doing other things, um, but it helped me on the course and figuring out my path. What questions do you guys have? We're, we're here for a few more minutes. Um, I answered some of the questions in the chat, but if anything's unclear, I can clarify. Yeah, feel free to ask questions. Don't all talk at once. <laughs> I don't even know if you laughed at oh, my joke. Okay. It could be a very long <laughs> semester. <laughs> Gabby, you were trying to ask a question? Um, in the application, there's the excursions to Rome and Venice and um, Sorianto, um, can you guys like talk more about that? Like what we'd be doing there? Do you want to talk about that one, Paula, since AIFS organizes? Sure, sure. So, yeah, so what, what we do, and I don't have it in the presentation, but we have um, some optional excursions because what what we've what happened in the past past semesters is that students have really enjoyed the organization of having everything taken care of them for them on um, some travel as well as having those organized guides right there's nothing like having a really um, fascinating guide take you through these places so that's what we've done with the Venice the Sorrento and um Pompeii, Sorrento Pompeii um, trips. And so what we'll do is we'll include transportation, generally by train, sometimes by bus. We'll have you in a hotel with breakfast. Um, some group meals are included and we'll have entrances and guided tours to all of the must-sees. And they're not just cultural guided tours, right? That we're really focusing on um, things that are related to your course material. And so we really try and highlight all of that. So um, those are open 
to students who want to sign up. Um, generally, they don't fill up. You can wait. You don't have to general. Generally, you don't have to do it on the first application. If you want to wait and and sign up a little later, that's possible. I think prior to departure, that's the best, right? Just to make sure that you have a spot. Um, most of them fill up. Sometimes too, you might not be the only group in Florence that semester. So sometimes some of those groups will open up to all of the students on our, our different um, programs. So um, yeah, they, they could fill up. So you could wait, you know, but not too long. <laughs> Thank you, Paula, for answering the okay. question. Does anybody else have questions? I many there were many questions in the chat. We have answered them all. And uh, one more question. Yes, uh, Alice um uh, mentioned something in the chat. Very important. You have no class on Fridays, except for the first two weeks, right, Paula? Right, right. So right. Don't make any Friday plans the first two weeks, but then after that you're you're free um mm -hmm. and then the italian life and culture is on thursday evenings as well as tuesday so if you decide to leave town i'd advise leaving friday there's one student asked um are we required to take 12 units there yes and so you're going to want to take um italian life and culture which is three units and then Kelly, you were saying they need to sign up for one anthropology class and then uh, six other units from the other options, which were history, biology, or English, or you could take more anthropology classes. I'd love to have you in all my classes. <laughs> yeah, that would make it easy. <laughs> so we have one more question asked, do we get some sort of student discount for travel expense around Europe? I think there are some, well, first of all, there are budget airlines that are amazingly affordable. You'll be surprised. Um, I don't think that many airlines offer student discounts. And as far as I know, but the, the budget airlines like Ryanair, EasyJet, those travel everywhere and they are surprisingly affordable. And most students decide where they're gonna travel based on what kind of deals they get on the website, which is smart. It's best not to plan too much before your semester because once you get there and you all get to know each other and you all decide um, you know, where you wanna go, you'll make plans for, for those breaks then. Um, and then you will get student discounts for museums and things like that, right? So if you bring your college ID with you, you'll be able to use that for um, entrances to many museums and, and things like that. And then there's one a more question in yeah. here about the airport. Um, it's my understanding that we get picked up at the airport yeah. and brought. Right. So students on the group flight are able to, then will be met by the group. For students that are not on the group flight who decide to book their own, um, they uh, can send us their details if they want to be met. We um, are, it would be up to our staff and our um, space limitation and, um, and uh, our, you know, the timing. Uh, we would be able to work with you to see if we could pick you up or not for a small fee. Um, we try and accommodate, but again, it will depend on how much, you know, if the buses are big enough and we can hold your luggage, um, all that, all that good stuff. So we can't guarantee right now, but it is something that we definitely would try and work with you with. Should I just keep reading questions? Yeah, I'm afraid I have to jump off. Um, I have a doctor consult that I have to do right now at 12, but um, if you all have any questions for me through um, Kelly, she can um, forward me any questions that you'll have. Thanks for coming, Paula. Thank you, Paula, Thank you. for I'm joining sorry, us. Sorry, sorry this time. I, my doctor was totally unable to see to talk to me at any other time, so. It's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for coming. You Thank soon. you. Bye. So what Bye, other Paula. questions do we have in here, Kelly? Um, um, we have a last meeting. Someone said someone about meeting in Sacramento or another college. Oh, that's a pre-departure orientation. Oh, yes. So that's a mandatory. I have a date and deadline in the 
in the chat. That's a mandatory meeting for pre-departure orientation um, for these uh, four uh, school districts. So that's the only in-person meeting before we leave that you would be required to go to? Um, there's one more before that. It's um, meet and greet. So that would be in our own school district, just um, San Mateo County uh, Community College students will meet for, um, normally will provide lunch. So for our students to get to know each other, it will be fun event. It's only like an hour, hour and a half, meet either at CSM or Kenyatta or Skyline College for, for lunch. Oh, okay, great. That's mm -hmm. new. That'll be nice though, because yes. you guys can meet each other. Hello? Yes, feel free. Ah, uh, yes. So, um, a question. So, we have to take 12 units in Italy, and for online classes, would that be, or if you wanted to take uh, units, would that have to be on top of the 12 units you would take in the U uh, Italy program? Yes. So, you okay. can take additional you. classes online. Um, somebody was asking me about the online lab class, which pairs with the physical anthropology class to get the science GE done. Um, and so, it is possible to take more classes online besides the 12 in Florence. But remember, you're in Florence. And so, as a, this is the student part of me talking when I was there, um, your time books up. So, I would I would be cautious with taking additional classes, but you can do it. Another thing you could do is maybe take some summer classes um, if you're thinking about transferring in your GE. Yeah, the only issue is that like some of the courses that are shown on the program are a little redundant when it comes to my degree plan and everything. So okay. that's the only concern that I have. Right. So you'll have to maybe... Um, Think about if the program's right, and I I hope it is for you. Maybe take some extra classes. One thing, um, I was a community college student and transferred, so you're going to want to talk to an academic counselor about this because that was a while ago for me. Um, but I remember there was a certain number of units I could take beyond the 60 that counted as like extra units towards my graduation when I transferred where I transferred. Okay. So I don't know if that's the case for you because I don't know your goals or which college. Okay, that's fine. I'll, yeah, uh... but I would definitely ask um, the academic counselor because maybe maybe you just take a couple classes just for fun, you know, out of interest that you might not have to take if you stayed here. Um, but they would probably maybe count towards those extra units. All right, I'll do that. Thank you. Yeah, I don't want to give you the wrong advice. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Yeah. So maybe um, there were some questions too about academic rigor and um, the film class. I would say we're going to be watching a lot of films in that class. So there'll be like essay reflections, but it won't be um, like daily or weekly stuff like my cultural and physical classes are. I don't know if that helps with your decision. No, it helps. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm happy to, to send you guys the syllabi. Um, I almost have cultural and physical, they're they're done basically. It's just the, the ethnographic film class I'm still working on because I'm trying to sort out which films are gonna be available in Florence. Um, so if you guys wanna look at syllabi ahead of time, that's okay with me too. Just email me and I'll put my email in the chat. Thank you, and Jessica, there's um, one more question saying, and can they withdraw the class after um, they are in Italy? Can they drop the class? Alice, maybe you can answer that question. Yeah, I already answered. So they can choose other courses. They can audit other courses and switch courses, but you still have, need to have 12 units to be full-time students. Yeah, we do have students who change classes and then yeah, after they take the, uh, took the class for a couple of times, they feel it's not appropriate for them. So they choose they can choose another course that's offered by the program. Yeah, no problem. And I I kind of I don't know. I mean, for my classes, I usually take people this first day and that's it. So I would probably really think about what classes you want um, because it might be hard to switch around. 
Yeah, it is because um, the classes offered by the other three uh, college districts, you will have to uh, submit your OpenCCC application, get their student ID, and then register for the class. It's a process that's going to take time. So really, I I'd suggest you meet with your academic counselor um, to pick the classes that you really need and that would benefit you. So you don't have to switch when you get to Italy because you don't want to put the extra stress on yourself when you are in Italy. One last thing I wanted to say too, is that if you're kind of on the fence about this um, and you really want to study abroad in your life, now is actually the time because it's so much cheaper than when you transfer to the UC or CSU or a private college. Um, the cost is about a third. So I remember thinking, oh, my God, this is so much money back in the 90s. And it was, you know, um, I didn't, for example, get to leave Florence the whole time just due to money reasons. So I didn't travel, but there was plenty to see in Florence anyway. And I saw something new every day, which was amazing. Um, so now is is the time, um, even financially. All right, well, uh, I don't see yes. here do we questions. have one more question? Yes. Uh, let's okay. see. Okay, We've, if we apply and pay the deposit but don't get accepted, will we get the money back? Alice, would you like to answer that question? So if you visit the program webpage, there is a restore and refund policy. There is information about the dates when you can withdraw and how much deposit you can get back. I'm trying to it's the, the requirements too to answer that question, um, the requirements to be accepted into the program are on the page too. So things like, you know, do you have the correct GPA? Are you over 18? Um, so if you answer yes to those questions, it's a pretty high likelihood that you're going to get into the program. So again, um, you I must read the policy. requirement. <clears throat> I copied the refund, uh, refund policy in the chat box. So November 10 is the deadline. And if you pay now, but withdraw on and before that date, you can get uh, a refund, but less uh, 150 processing fee. So I think they're asking if we don't, if we, if they want to go and we don't accept them, do they get all their money back? Yes, I think, of course. Thanks. But the deadline, yeah, you have to pay attention to the deadline, November 10th. So you have to do that before that. Okay. So uh, do we have, do you have to be 18 before September 22nd or before February leaving day? I would think the leaving day, Alice. What's the question? If should they have to be 18 um, by the time of signing up or by the time they leave for Europe? Isn't it when they leave for Europe? When they leave, yeah. Before they leave. Before they the program starts. Great. Yeah, um, Elena, I have another question. Uh, do you have the chance to meet your roommates? Yes, that's a great uh, meet, meet and great. You can have a chance to meet your fellow classmates. Um, before you go in, you can make friends, make them uh, uh, select your own roommate. And another chance is uh, pre-departure orientation. You can meet other students. You can select your roommate. Uh, when do we know if we have been accepted? After your meeting uh, with uh, Jessica and I, then we will send you a, an email. If you are accepted, we will send you a formal acceptance letter. As Ms. Uh, as uh, Professor uh, Marshall said, the acceptance rate is pretty high. If you answer all those questions, are you 18 or older? 
um, do you meet the GPA requirements? And uh, we will be ask, asking you some questions about um, your independent, um, your level of independence and uh, um, things like that. We will be sending you questions um, before the interview. And we'd encourage you to sign up now because if you pay the deposit, we can get you on the September 22nd calendar to do mm -hmm. this meeting that she's talking about um, to tell you if you're accepted or not. There'll be other dates too besides September 22nd, but if you can get on that, then you'll know a lot sooner. Yeah, the yes. interview, the purpose of the interview is, no more, is that we want to know more about you, but as long as you meet the minimum requirement, you, you, you will be accepted. Thank you all for joining us. Do you? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. And um, feel free to reach out to any of us if you have any questions. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to have you in our program.